Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer, and today we're going over AI chatbot prompting fundamentals. Are you even watching the right video? Well, if your AI chatbot results aren't what you like them to be, or you're just starting out with AI, and you want to know the basics of an effective prompt, then yes. Questions answered in this video. Why should you break down or chunk complex tasks into sequential bite-sized prompts? What does it mean to chunk tasks? How do you chunk tasks? And why or when should you chunk tasks? Of course, we'll go over a great example and we'll end with the most important question, why should you care? Let's jump right in. Here we are at Claude and the question here is, what does it mean to chunk tasks? Simply, you're gonna break down a complex task into bite-sized steps or chunks. These smaller, Focus tasks or chunks can then be completed individually. A quick example might just be brushing your teeth. Okay, brush your teeth is a task, but it could be broken down into simpler, more sequential bite-sized chunks like pick up the toothpaste tube, take off the cap, apply toothpaste to toothbrush. I missed a step, pick up the toothbrush, right? So sequential bite-sized chunks of a larger task. So the question, the greater question is, how do you chunk tasks for an AI model? Well, first you're gonna determine your main goal, project, or task. What are you trying to do or what are you trying to get the model to do? Outline the steps required to complete that task by breaking down the tasks into subtasks or again, chunks. Turn the first subtask or chunk into a clear standalone prompt. Turn each subsequent chunks into clear dependent prompts. Now, both of those two statements are gonna become much clearer in the example, so just stay with me as I move through the rest of this explanation. All right, so we've got these sequential chunks. You're gonna go ahead and take that first chunk and feed it, feed that prompt to the AI model, then use the output for the model's next prompt, rinse and repeat <laughs> using each output as the building block for the next prompt. Continue until complete. All right, like I said, an example is gonna bring this home, so let's jump right in. All right, so here we're gonna use the example of a graduate student writing a paper for submission to a journal. Probably a bad example because you wouldn't wanna write a, <laughs> a paper with AI and submit it to a journal, but stay with me. All right, so as usual, I'm gonna use a bad example. And when I say as usual, please check out the other videos on prompting if you haven't already. This builds on the previous three or four videos I've already shot. All right, so bad example. Write a paper titled, Why Students Should Be Using AI in the Classroom. Okay, you could get a paper. There will be a result if you hit enter with this prompt, but it's probably not gonna be the result that you want or you're looking for. So let's refine this just a little bit to a less bad example. Um, here you can see we've used the PAO model that I've talked about before, persona, audience, and output. So persona, assume the persona of a graduate student. I'll just go step by step here and write a five paragraph paper for the publication in the, write a five paragraph paper for publication in the Journal of Artificial Intelligence Research. So output and audience, right? PAO are all covered here. And then the name of the paper or our thesis for this example today is why students should be using AI in the classroom. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the chunking portion of, of this prompt. So here we go. Chunk or prompt one. As I mentioned before, it needs to be a standalone prompt, right? Because we're, we're, this is the first thing we're gonna feed to the model. So it's step one, but we gotta provide all that goodness, the context, the PAO, the persona audience and output. And as you can see, we have that here. So I'm just gonna delete this. Context, persona and audience. So you're a graduate student writing to a paper, writing a paper for publication in the Journal of Artificial Intelligence Research. Output, provide five numbered arguments. So five numbered arguments. This is where the, this is where everything changes a little bit. So step one, provide five numbered arguments supporting the topic, why students should be using AI in the classroom. It's gonna give us five arguments. We're gonna pick three. 
okay? So step one, give us five arguments so we can pick three. Important, if you have questions, ask before beginning. This is the uh, caveat that I throw into any prompt. I'm only gonna put it in this one. We're not gonna include it in any of the rest, but I just want to I wanted to remind you, don't forget about this goodness because Claude will ask you uh, if he has questions. All right, so let's go ahead and hit enter on prompt number one. Don't have any questions here, the five numbered arguments. There we go. All right, so this is our opportunity to review the arguments that Claude provided and pick three. And it's also our opportunity to provide feedback. Hey, none of these, none of these cut mustard. So cut mustard. none of these are good. I want something else. And so we can back and forth until we get to three that we really like. Um, so this is, this is just one of the benefits of chunking. There's interactions between each output. But let's say we like one, three, and five, and we're going to move on. Okay, so what is prompt number two? provide three numbered counter arguments that refute the same topic. So you can see we're building, because Claude's giant context window of 144,000 tokens, we are building on the output of the last prompt's results. And so each of these subsequent chunks is a, not a standalone prompt, but is a dependent prompt that's building on that last result. Provide three numbered counter arguments that refute the same topic. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And at this point, it's going to give us three counter arguments. We're going to pick one. Um, and this is, of course, also our opportunity to look at these three and go, well, um, I don't love all three of these. Give me three more. Or we could say, I like what you did with number two and number three. Give me some more like that. Um, this interaction with the model lets it know what we're thinking and drives the results, um, perhaps kind of in our own mental wavelength. In any event, we're going to say that we like one here, and we're going to go with that. So if we like one, we're gonna go with prompt three now. Using arguments one, three, and five, and counter argument one, create an outline for the paper. Again, so we're building on our previous results, producing the next result or output. So here is the outline. Again, an opportunity to go, no, I don't like this outline. Let's go ahead and back and forth a little bit until we get to a result that we enjoy. But for the sake of argument and the time of this video, we're gonna say we like this outline. Nice job, Claude. And so I think we're on prompt four here. Using the outline, draft an introduction paragraph that hooks the reader and previews the main points. So using the outline, we're pointing at the outline, Draft an introduction paragraph that hooks the reader and previews the main points. Go ahead and hit enter. Try that again. <laughs> I might as well just leave myself right here, huh? All right, so again, another opportunity. No, this introduction paragraph is not at all what I was thinking. Give me some more of this. Give me a little less of this. Give me a little more of that. Crafting the results and pushing the model in the direction we want it to take to ultimately produce better results. All right, so let's say draft introduction paragraph is good. Let's move on to prompt five. So again, using the outline, so we're pointing back to a previous result. We're building, um, each of these chunks are all building on one another. Using the outline, write one body paragraph for each argument. So reference each argument, write a paragraph, and the counter argument, providing evidence and examples to support each point, boom. Again, another opportunity to review what it's produced and go, yeah, no, yeah, no, more of this, less of that, and arrive at an output that is preferred. <laughs> Counter argument body one, you can see just cranking it all out. Nice job, Claude. Let's say this worked for us. What's the next prompt? Write a conclusion paragraph that refutes the counterargument, summarizes the key arguments, provides final thoughts, and a call to action. Here's a draft conclusion paragraph. Let's say that we just love this immediately. Our final prompt is going to be a sequential step, but again, building chunked prompt. Um, I said a lot there, that's kind of confusing. It's a chunked prompt, but I've broken into two sequential steps to make sure the model understands what I'm asking you to do here. So first combine the final version of each of the paragraphs. So combine everything 
and the final version of each of the paragraphs. So if we went back and forth on some of these paragraphs, we're telling it, pick the final version, uh, and then review and revise the essay for flow, transitions, grammar, and clarity. So once you've smooshed it all together, make sure it works and revise and refine the essay before giving it to me. Um, and again, we put numbered bullet, bulleted numbers here to help the model understand what to do first um, and what order to follow, as I've explained in previous videos linked below. But let's go ahead and hit the enter button and see what we get. Here is the combined draft with all the paragraphs, and this is our paper. So we chunked each of these tasks. We were able to look at the outputs, determine that we like them or refine them, and work our way towards optimal results. So why or when should you chunk tasks? Anytime the model is required to perform multiple tasks and you need better results. Pretty straightforward. So how does chunking, I guess in summary, how does chunking produce better results? Well, it reduces the cognitive load on the model by making instructions easier to understand and follow and by avoiding error compounding through iterative, iterative refinement. So if we just asked it, if we just give it one prompt and let it process that and give us results, it could have made an error somewhere along the way, which would have compounded, right? Because each of those steps would have relied on the previous step. And if it had done this on its own, it would just it would just end up in garbage at the end and we wouldn't have been able to, to uh, eliminate that. So through this iterative refinement of looking at each step, we're able to avoid this, this potential error compounding uh, or any subpar outputs along the way by using chunked tasks. Finally, chunking provides transparency into the model's reasoning. Each task, we're asking it a question, it's giving us a result so we can see kind of what it's thinking, thinking so to speak. And again, of course, it helps avoid that error compounding that I mentioned that could occur with a single prompt. It's the interstitial human feedback refining the model's understanding that ultimately gets us to the premium results that we are looking for by chunking tasks. But so what? Why should you care? Well, as, I, as I've said many times before, why should you improve your prompting skills? AI is the future, and the future is now. And no, AI will not replace humans, but humans that use AI will replace humans that don't. And the only way to get good at using AI is by using AI. Thanks for watching. If this video has inspired you to try a new method or chunking or anything else with AI prompting, let me know, comments down below. Uh, please don't forget, lots of link goodness below, all the sources I use to develop these last videos. Um, if you like this, please subscribe, share it with somebody else that could find it useful or would find it useful. As always, if you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now go and be productive.